My name is Cameron Hall. I'm a husband, father, and outdoors enthusiast. I'm a map maker by trade and an outdoorsman by passion. I wanted to share this passion with my friends and family. I'm not a professional outdoorsman, and by most standards, I'm not even very good. Well, that's pretty exciting. I hope you enjoy this series as much as I've enjoyed creating it. This is Trail Trail. This has been an absolute disaster. these ones second hand from another friend of mine that does a lot of big river cat fishing. So they'll work for now until I get my other ones in. So hopefully we can get something. Hopefully we can, we can uh, bump a jumbo today. I don't know. We'll see. Won't be from a lack of trying that's for sure. That's Mike. Don't let his trendy style fool you. Under those designer jeans and custom shirt is a down-to-earth, homegrown hillbilly. You can blame Mike for getting me into this hobby. I met Mike 15 years ago when I was working for a masonry company. I've learned most of what I know about bow hunting and fishing from him. He has been a good friend and was very encouraging when I decided to go to college. His oldest son is my squirrel hunting partner, despite him calling me a pretty boy 10 years ago. Yeah, I was up in the I was up in the front. I was up in the front and um, and I heard it. I had the, the clicker set, but I had it. I had it just the main clothes. It wasn't preschool or anything. And uh, what were you saying that you was being lazy? I was being real lazy. But I had him. Uh, but I set the ball. Over to him. I didn't know how big it was at the time. I knew it was a big fish, but I didn't I didn't know it was gonna be 60 pounds. So I uh, I turned it over to him. And then he starts cranking down on it and then uh, it does the roll of the tail flap. And I'm like, oh that's gonna be a good fish.
This was the first time we'd been bumping by ourselves. The only other time we went, our friend Derek was running the boat for us. He made it look a lot easier than it is. I had a tough time trying to fish and control the speed and direction of the boat. Makes sense, but I can see the rock line on the. I can definitely see the rock line now on the side scan. And the bottom looks really good here at 20 feet of water. Hey, you're getting out there a little further, aren't you? I'm having a hard time. Yeah, it's pretty good. can't catch the fish if uh, everybody gets to them before you do. I just hit it. You can. You want me to come off? Bump him! Yeah, you want me to come off the anchor? <laughs> no, 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 Boy. Ah. Hey, don't get the boat. <laughs> we bumped one. We bumped one. Hooner. Hey, it don't matter. <laughs> now that's one right there that I would get on board with releasing in some grease. Well, here you go. Yeah. Just really surprised that we didn't just get out here our first time ever doing it and just 
Riding the boat and fishing was a lot more challenging than I built in my mind. Most of the morning, I just focused on running the boat. I started to get comfortable watching the bank, trolling motor direction, and depth finder. By the end of the trip, I was consistently able to hold the boat in the right spot. We didn't get the fish we were after, but we got lunch. Okay, so this is the uh, the blue cat that Mike and I bumped. Well, Mike caught it, but I was driving the boat and I caught the bait, so I think that uh, that entitles me to half. But uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna smoke this hole today. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna skin it. I'm gonna clip the clip the fins off and uh, gut it, and then I'm gonna smoke it whole. And so I just wanted to show the process here of of how, how I do that. I don't really need a fillet knife for what I'm gonna do, but it's just, it's just handy to have. So I just, there's a, right, right here behind their gill plate on their head, I just make small incision to cut through the skin. 
I, I try not to cut too deep. If I was gonna fillet it, it wouldn't be so big of a deal, but but I want I want this thing whole. So. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little disappointed in um, today. I was hoping we'd get something a little bit more substantial than this little guy. But this is a good fish to eat and especially to do this, especially to do this uh, hole smoking. It's a perfect size for that. I've done this once before. Um, I caught a blue cat with Steve and his brother Adam out in Milford last year and they uh and we did this so. so now I'm just going to pull the skin back I'm going to grab it I have some pliers I'm just going to use regular I'm just going to use regular pliers here just grab the skin and pull it I have skinning pliers. I don't know where they are though. So these these will work fine. This is about the the best size for me uh, to keep. I don't I don't really keep fish that are bigger than five pounds. This one's probably a three at most. Good, it's a good fish though. The meat's gonna be really good on it. Now we gotta peel the front side of this. Fish. Then I'll use my dikes. Fins off. Come right up through the vent here. Cut this belly meat back. Try to keep everything clean. Then I'm gonna finish cutting off the fins here. I did bleed the fish out before, before I left the river, and that's gonna help keep this uh, meat a lot cleaner. Just gotta pull all this out.
I cut the head off. Then I'm going to cut the tail off here. And this fin. And then I'm going to take this inside and I'll get this a little bit more cleaned up. So then that's you know that's that's what I got and I'll uh I'll smoke this, I don't know, maybe hour and a half, two hours at about 275. But I'm gonna go I'm gonna go soak this, I'm gonna let it get cleaned up, and then I'm gonna get cleaned up. And uh, it should be should be really really good tonight for dinner. Very simple. It's one of the easiest ways to uh, clean these guys. So, I'm gonna go get this fish cleaned up, I'm gonna go get cleaned up and then We'll, uh, we'll smoke this here in a little bit. All right, so Jack cleaned up, got the smoker warmed up, warming up. I don't know what it's at yet, but we're gonna get this meat going. So I got it all, I got it all nice and cleaned out. I got to let it soak in the refrigerator and some water for a while. I'm not gonna do anything crazy with this. All I'm gonna do is smoke it whole. I'm gonna use olive oil and then salt and pepper. That's it, that's all I'm gonna do. There's no science behind this. I don't even know if I should do this, but that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm just going to brush this olive oil all over it. Maybe I'll brush the inside. Still got the silver skin on it. My family and I don't, it, the silver skin doesn't bother us. Some people clean it off, some people don't. We don't, it doesn't bother us one bit. So we're not gonna do it. I'm trying to keep it open so the smoke can get inside the, 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 the cavity there. I'm gonna wash my hands before I salt and pepper it down. I'm just gonna use coarse black pepper and um, pink Himalayan salt. I don't know how much to put on, I'm just kinda guessing here. Try to keep one hand clean so I can touch the bottle.
There's Bonnie, and there's Dozer. So this isn't meant to be anything super high tech. No fancy recipes, nothing like that. I'm no professional, so I'm gonna go run this out to the smoker and uh, get it put in. I don't know how long it's been. I think it's probably close enough. So I'm gonna take it off and um, I, I did put a thermometer in there, I just forgot to check it. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna look at it and see and if it looks good. Um, try a piece. Oh, it looks really good. It must have, it, it looks like it fell over during the cooking process, but it's no big deal. Nothing I'm mad about anyways. Looks really good to me. So good. Really like smoked catfish. Definitely give it a try. Really appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it.